beautiful Alaska. Victor and I landed here yesterday. We went from the Fort Lauderdale Airport to the Chicago Airport to Anchorage Airport. 10 hours of traveling to get here and then we took a rental car from Anchorage to Seward. And this is where we're gonna be spending the next almost week here. We're gonna be doing a lot of things like fishing and catching a bunch of different species, but I figured why not also make a travel vlog kind of style video. I know I don't make these a lot, but how often do you come to Alaska? So I want to be able to show you guys all this amazing beauty there is besides just the fishing part of Alaska. We've been here for less than 24 hours and we've already seen so many incredible things. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Now let's get to exploring. So this is the only day we have that we are not fishing. And Victor and I were like, what should we do today? And we're like, let's just go for a drive and go for an adventure and see what we can find. And everywhere along the road is just so scenic. And there's basically only like one road throughout this whole entire town. And there are so many cool places to stop and just look at. What better way to show you guys than with this guy right here. I'm gonna put the drone in the air so hopefully you guys enjoy Ricky's drone footage right now. This is a bucket list trip for a lot of people and we're so fortunate enough to be here but I mean you want to talk about beauty. It is probably the furthest you can get away from South Florida but not just that but a completely different environment. I mean where we live is beautiful but this is just the thing I like about the mountains I don't know about you it humbles you it makes you feel so small you realize how big things are and how just beautiful and how this place looks like it's just been untouched by humanity like you I feel no... like you could just film things for like days and days and well weeks months and never be able to get to see everything it's yeah. just so crazy how much there is to see and how beautiful and breathtaking literally every single thing is oh yeah I know we're going to be doing a lot of drone footage on this trip let's cross our fingers now day one just lifted off the drone on the first try that Nothing bad will happen with this drone. <laughs> Kirk says, don't get too ballsy with it. Yeah, Just take literally, it easy. take it easy. Don't run into any trees. <laughs> Flying the drone and you got all these little streams and I don't know what they are. Either probably a salmon or trout, but you guys can see there's there's a fish swimming upstream right there. How far away are you? Um, oh my gosh, Brooke, look at this. You see all those fish? Gosh, it's so beautiful. Isn't the it? The water is so clear. It doesn't look that clear from the side. Wow. Wow, is right. What are they? I think they're salmon. Look at that. Thing. Oh, He's they spook. Huge. Yeah, that's a dying salmon. So this time here, from what we've read, it's either pink or silver salmon that are coming up the rivers, and um, salmon are like one of the only species that I know that spend a lot of their life in salt water, and then they go up the river to end their life cycle when they um, when they spawn out, which is really cool. Yeah, they're salmon. I'm oh my Go gosh. All right, so that bridge that Victor could see from the drone, we just drove and we're just like on the side of the road on this bridge and there are so many salmon straight down, it's crazy. There's so many, look at them. They're swimming in inches of water, I mean inches. Look at his back, way out of the water. I'm sure anyone who's from Alaska or has been here before is like, yeah, that's what it's always like or something. But as a Floridian, this is absolutely amazing. I've never seen anything like this. So as far as I know about salmon species, I believe these are pink salmon.
thought it was not something that I would ever get to do anytime soon. And here we are, so I feel so, so fortunate to already be here in this point of my life and be here, especially with you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and we wouldn't be here without you guys, so it's really, it, honestly, you guys are the only reason we're here, so I'm sure Bricky wants to thank you, and I want to thank you guys for watching her as well. Yeah, seriously, thank you guys so much. So the reason we're actually here in Alaska to begin with is that a young charter captain named Johnny started a fishing charter and invited us to come fishing with him. So that's what we're going to be doing the rest of this week. All right, guys, well, we just fished today all day, and we just ended up cleaning all of our fish at J Dock. So if you guys come here, you got to check out J Dock. All the boats come in clean all their fish there even if you don't go fishing it is a cool place to just check out but there were it's like a crowd of people there and they hang the fish and they weigh them so you guys can come and see that too and see how the fish filleted someone caught a giant octopus also a 180 pound halibut today so it's a really cool place to see and there's all the restaurants down here and little shops and things like that there are a ton of sailboats in this harbor as well as a lot of aluminum boats, which is something that you don't see a lot of in Florida. You never see these aluminum boats, you always see fiberglass boats. There are a lot of fiberglass boats, but there is also a lot of aluminum boats. So that's pretty interesting. Our friend Johnny was saying that they can take more of a beating basically. And if they hit logs, a lot of them are reinforced to be able to hit logs where, you know, if you hit it with a normal fiberglass boat, you kind of be screwed and logs in Alaska is something you gotta worry about. <laughs> so today we caught halibut, lingcod, yellow eye rockfish, and black rockfish. All right guys, time to fillet up this yellow eye rockfish. Start on this one. thing has spines all over it. Down his whole back, his face. They have some beautiful white meat. meat. Perfectly white meat. Now here they leave all the skin on to help identify what species they are. And then this processing place behind us called J-Doc finishes cleaning it all up for you, vacuum seals it, and then can you can either bring it home in the plane with you or they can ship it home to you. So that's what we're doing with all the art fish is we're going to bring them all home so that we can bring them home and share them with the family. Beautiful. Good job. So day two of fishing in Alaska and we've caught some salmon already. And now we pulled up to this rock where there's a bunch of seals, probably like a dozen seals just sitting on these rocks. There's baby seals and there's big seals too. Garrett says that the seals hang out on this rock and then across the way is where the sea lions hang out. You want to say anything for your video? Yeah, hold on one second. This thing's about to leap in. Oh! <gasps> And the thing's about to leap in. Oh, he just did a backflip! Right, guys so we are over by the Ialic glacier which is right here behind me and there's pieces of ice all over the place so you got to be careful when you're driving around not to run into a big chunk but that's the closest I've ever been to a glacier before do you want to tell us some glacier facts um I don't even know many glacier facts to be honest 
Tell us why it's blue. From what somebody told me, and do not quote me on this because I'm not a glaciologist, but um, apparently it's because there's no basically oxygen in the ice. It's like crystallized water because the pressure of the snow condensed it so much that that's where you get that blue color from. Like I said, don't quote me on that. I'm not a glaciologist. Is that a thing, a glaciologist? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they study glaciers. They uh, they drill into them and they uh, get samples like how old they are, uh, do the, like the carbon test, tell you like how old it is, when it was formed, and that's how they study them. So, uh, Greenland, their ice sheets are so thick, like miles deep, that they'll drill down and you can tell like when like volcanoes erupted and like when meteorites hit the earth and because uh, they'll have layers that are a lot thicker than others and um, different carbon levels. But when these glaciers retreat they find forests underneath them so we know that there was forest there at one point. So that's just a cycle the earth has. It thaws, it freezes, that's why you have ice ages. So we went fishing again today. Today is day three in Alaska, but the second day of fishing. And we both caught our first salmons and we're actually eating them right now. It honestly doesn't look the prettiest, um, but you know, we're working with what we got. We only have this little tiny propane grill behind us and we don't even have a sink or anything to wash our dishes. So we're eating on paper plate, but it's absolutely delicious. I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest salmon lover, but this is as fresh as it gets and it's delicious. We're eating it raw with just soy sauce and then we put teriyaki and grilled it and it's so good. I think you might be a salmon lover. You maybe just have never had fresh salmon. Look at that. Steaming fresh salmon. So good. I've known Brooke for a long time and for her to be eating raw salmon with a little bit of soy sauce is very unheard of. It's really good. But this teriyaki is really delicious as well. So this is the cute little cabin that we are staying at. And over here, there's a little fire pit and these cute hanging lights where you got a little fire going. What are you doing, Mike? You know, playing with fire, literally. Last night, we tried to do this. Didn't work out too good. So we went really aggressive with little sticks today and had a little, a little help from Safeway with some fire paste, that's the secret weapon. Everything here is wet, so it's really hard to get anything to light because it's all wet. <laughs> so that's why we had to do a little cheat. And normally I would have used like lighter fluid or something, but they didn't have that at Safeway. And that's the only thing that they had was fire paste. So it worked. <laughs> and if you're wondering why we're sitting around the fire while it's still light out, is because it doesn't get dark here till like 10 30 at night so it's a little different i think it's probably getting close to nine o'clock what do you think vic mm -hmm. it's probably close to like nine o'clock and it's not dark whatsoever in Alaska and the third day of fishing here and today is by far the most beautiful day that we've had check out the sky not a cloud in the sky the day first day we were here it was so cloudy but absolutely beautiful today it's even warm in the Sun but still really cold in the shade but we had another great day of fishing Ooh, yeah Did you yeah on? yeah on. Oh, that's a sick shopper. We got the gaff shot in the back. 
We've been catching halibut all day and some rockfish, lingcod, one keeper lingcod in the box. Let go a bunch of small ones and we've been catching and releasing a bunch of small halibut as well. But we're having a lot of fun. Oh, there he is. Good halibut. So you're allowed two halibut per person per day. I've already caught one similar to this size, but we already have a lot of fish to bring home, so I'm gonna let this guy go and let him grow. See ya. See you next year when you're giant. You think it'll only take one year? No. <laughs> All right guys, so today is our last official day here in Alaska. Tomorrow we are flying home, but today we drove to Soldotna and fished the Kenai River and caught some salmon. And on the way here, it was like two hours from Seward, we saw a bunch of burnt dead trees on the side of the road. And two years ago, they had a really, really bad fire during the summer. So it's nothing like the beautiful lush green that we've seen everywhere else. But this is the first day that we have been here where it's actually rained and it has been raining since probably 11 o'clock. So today when we fished it drizzled the entire day. But luckily we had amazing weather every single other day that we were here. So one day of rainy weather wasn't too bad for us, but we have had an incredible time. When we came up here, John who invited us up here told us that August is very hit or miss in terms of the weather in Alaska. And uh, he was right, we had three gorgeous days. I mean, breathtaking days, like textbook perfect, clear blue skies. And then today, we suffered a little bit, but it was not bad. It's nothing like what we're used to back home in Florida. You guys who've been watching our videos know that in Florida, I mean, we get downpours, thunderstorms, lightning, the whole shebang, huge winds. Over here, it's like a light drizzle. Just enough to annoy you, but not enough to make you go home. And today was also the coldest day that we've been here. I think it was 42. Oh, it was cold. It's cold for sure. I think it was like 42 running on the river in the freezing cold rain was a little brutal, but once you're all bundled up, it's not the worst. <laughs> we saw so many eagles today. And I didn't know this, but when the eagles are not fully mature, they do not have that white, white head like a normal bald eagle. They're also not fully brown. They're kind of like blotchy. Yeah, they're like blotchy black and brownish. And then um, Ryan was who we fished with today. Captain Ryan said that after about five years, after they're like over five, that's when they get that white head. But we saw a bunch of immature ones today, but then also a few that also still had the white heads. But it's beginning to get to the point where we have seen so many eagles. <laughs> At the beginning, I freaked out when I saw one, and now they're like everywhere, and everyone who lives here just like thinks nothing about the bald eagle. And when we were freaking out, they were like, oh yeah, it's just like a bald eagle. And it's like, just a bald eagle, but now I understand, because today we probably saw 30 of them on the river. So I guess once you see them all the time, they don't become so amazing to you like they are to us. Crazy to see this, huh, Vic? Very you have all these lush green forests everywhere and then you just have this. Alright guys, well we just got home from Alaska and this is what we brought our fish home in. These three 50 pound boxes. And we just opened the first one. And they're packaged in these styrofoam coolers. And the fish is completely frozen solid. Got some rock fish. Salmon. Oh yeah, frozen solid still. And we have a lot of fish to fit into our deep freezer now. Thank you for watching this trip of a lifetime. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.